James Colin Harding, JO3. That's a journalist, petty officer. And then we started to lose people. Um, Commander Ford uh, was shot down uh, with AAA off the coast. There was a little village there. Um, and his, they took his beeper and put it in a truck and moved it out. And uh, I remember the Admiral calling in the uh, airstrikes on the flak site, which you never do, because there's no percentage in calling. But we were all really upset, because he was a very good officer, well-liked, and we just wanted to make a statement. Uh, we lost two guys from eight, eight, uh, uh, A6 uh, crew uh, from VA-85, Dunk, Lieutenants Duncan and Ashold, uh, wonderful guys. Uh, one of the things that uh, we were limited to is to fly below uh, the parallel, uh, and uh, we couldn't fly above it, so the North Vietnamese moved all the anti-aircraft stuff. And they, uh, they went out one night for suppression of those, uh, of those uh, uh, surface air missiles. And they had at least five of them were in the air. And they just ran out of, ran out of things. And they were good. I mean, they were cool. They, had to, they, wore the, they were the Snoopy hats, you know, and, uh, you know, and the scarves and all the, you know, the theater. I mean, these are the types of things that um, some people may think are uh, unprofessional. But when you're there and you're part of that, there's nothing unprofessional, OK? The most important thing you're dealing with is life, OK? And then we had an incident where we lost Commander Wolber, uh, who was the commanding officer of VF-102. Uh, he was shot down by a Russian flying, we think, uh, Big 29s, and uh, his his uh, Rio was a uh, Lieutenant Pinsky, uh, father-in-law of Captain Engen, first first uh, skipper, second skipper of the American. Uh, really nice guys, and being a Catholic, and Wilbur was a Catholic. Uh, I'd go to, we go to daily mass, and, and uh, you know, so I got a chance to ch chat with him and all this other stuff. But because of how he hit the ground after getting shot down, he was a celebrity to be kicked. So when they started, uh, you know, asking him what life was like and all this other stuff, uh, he had a different story than say somebody that was shot down by AAA, uh, guided by some radar. So he eventually was labeled and, uh, as a, a traitor. And um, I think there were three or four of those fellows that um, which were, were labeled as traitors, which is very painful uh, to me because if I was North Vietnamese and I had somebody like a squadron commander, one of the best squadrons in the Navy, fall into my lap, I was going to exploit him. I'd treat him like a king. Okay, just so I could march him out in front of the, the world press. Uh, I've, I've always felt very upset about that and uh, how, he was, how he was treated. To this day, um, I think his, I feel, based on what I heard uh, in IOIC where we tracked the sounds, that he had been given a reciprocal, reciprocal vector from the uh, St. Louis, which was a cruiser uh, managing the intercept, because the, the North Vietnamese used a high-low technique. The high guy and his MiG was off on every radar set in Southeast Asia. And then there, the low guy was using terrain masking. Okay, so when people went after him, this guy would come up and shoot him down. Uh, I think he got a recip. I think he pancaked over and got a, got a missile. Um, History doesn't say that, okay? But that's something I feel based on what I heard, so I listened to. Um, so 
when it was all over, uh, I mean, we lost the, the commanding officer of VF-85, uh, but we were able to rescue his, uh, his uh, bombardier navigator from an island, uh, really a sandbar, in the Songkha River. So I kind of carried those things with him because, you know, those men, okay, were people that we were intimate with for every line period, okay. And um, a piece of you goes when they go. And quite, uh, quite often you, you think they're frozen in time. Okay, I'm 74 years old. They're frozen in time. So when I, when I think about those men, up comes a picture in my brain of a guy in his 20s, mid 20s, 28. So those are the types of things that you carry inside. Um, and, you know, you say prayers for them every once in a while because they're with the Lord. Did what they were asked to do. So after that, we wrapped up everything. We went to, you know, our last line period. We had all the great ports of the of the Far East. Went to Sydney, Australia, which was magnificent. Uh, had a little problem in Wellington, New Zealand. They they didn't like the fact that we were carrying nuclear weapons, uh, so they. Siemens Union struck and were not going to give us supplies, uh, yet the pilots uh, union started running Liberty boats and the strike evaporated. The headline in the paper was, you know, these are the sons of the men and women that kept Australia safe before the Battle of the Coral Sea, because of the Battle of the Coral Sea. So everything broke, and Liberty and so on. Around South America, landed again in Rio, uh, and I got out on arrival. Uh, the, uh, they were going to let us reserves out earlier, but you know, if you're you know, assigned to a ship in Vietnam, you didn't get out early. So they're pulling into Norfolk there on December 17, 1968, with my mom and dad and my sister Deb, uh, while my brother, our, my brother was over in Vietnam as a captain with the Mac Viet Detachment down in the Mekong Delta. So my parents had to worry about the boys for another six months, but uh, came home, um, was proud of what I had done. Um, the, uh, my parents were proud of what their sons were doing. Um, and, and, and that's what you keep with you. And that's why you have loyalty now, even at my advanced age, to my ship and my crewmates.